Hello everyone, and welcome to Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. This is going to be a tutorial series where we will dive deep into the different game mechanics. And in this initial episode, we will dive into the different game options and the initial game setup. So without further ado, let's get started. When you first boot up the game, this is the window that you will be faced with. The first option, the campaign, is pretty self-explanatory. It is just a series of missions that you can play and it will teach you the basics of the game. The custom game option is basically the bread and butter of this title. This is where you can play the game as it is meant to be played, completely free of any restraints and you are free to do whatever you want. Of course, the load game is a, another self-explanatory option. You can load saved games. The tutorial is a good way to learn the very basics of the game. Here you can basically learn how to do things, but not why to do things. The campaign is better suited for that. In the tutorial, basically you can learn how to play the game and that is going to be pretty much it. As for the workshop, here you will be able to subscribe to different mods and buildings which will enhance the game the way you want it to be enhanced. The option that we will dive a little bit deeper into is of course the settings. Here we have a couple of sub-menus and we will see what each of them has to offer. And there are a couple of options that are not immediately obvious what they do, so I will try to go ahead and explain each of them. The most uh, obvious ones like the volume and things like that I will skip over, but there are a couple of options that are not as obvious. For example, we have this open windows on the left option. By default, the game will open different info windows on the right, right here. But if you would like to, you can tick this option and the game will open those info windows on the left instead. Allow me to demonstrate. So right now, this option is disabled. So, if we click on different buildings, the info window will open on the right. But if we enable it and apply the settings, then suddenly every single window that we open will be on the left instead. The next good option that you should take a look at is the custom GUI size. This is basically a way to make sure that you have the correct size user interface. By default, it is a little bit small, if I am honest. But if you tick this option, then you can uh, change the size. I like to have it as big as physically possible, which in my case is 115%. By default, this is the size of the user interface. So if we enable this, you will see that it will shrink quite a bit because it will start at 50%. So if we adjust that slider all the way up to 100%, this is basically the default size. But we can go a little bit higher than that to 115%. As I have said, I like to have it on this size. Two related options are these, the bottom menu level 2 scale and level 1 scale. They basically determine the size of the different construction menu icons and just as before, I like to have them as big as possible, so the UI is a little bit easier to read. Just to demonstrate, this is the smallest size we have on the construction menus. Let's open one of the sub-menus so we can see the difference between the level 1 and the level 2 menus. So, the menu level 1 is basically the very bottom. This is the main icons for construction. If we increase this to the maximum, they will be bigger and easier to read. The same goes for the level 2, so if we increase it, the sub-menus will be bigger as well. Of course, you can go the other way, even though they don't really take up all that much space even at the bigger size. If you would like to have a little bit better view of the game, then you can still decrease it if you want. And uh, second to last option that we will take a look at is this one, the construction tab on top. Once we get into the game I will show you this a little bit more in detail, but basically by default we have the construction options on the bottom of the screen. By taking this one, it will be moved on the top instead. 
So, as you can see, the construction menus are at the bottom. But if we enable this option, then they will move right on the top of the screen, and if you open the submenus, they will be popping down instead of up. And the last option that we are going to take a look at is the trains run on the left track option. This is going to be basically just a way to make it a little bit easier to make sure that if you want the trains to run on the left side of a double track setup, then you can simply tick this option and you will be able to set up the signals a little bit easier. This only really influences one single option in the game, and that is this double semaphore option. By default, it will place signals in a way that have the trains running on the right of the double track setup. But let's enable that option. There we go. And if we place this kind of signal once again, they will be reversed. So the trains will run on the left side of the track. If you want, you can do this all manually and that will basically do the exact same thing. But if you want to use this double semaphore option, this is a good way to make sure that the, run, the trains run on the correct side. The next submenu that we will take a look at is the warning messages. Here you will find each and every message category that you can find in the game. And if you want to disable or enable any of them, you can do so right here. And you might want to do so because there might be some messages that you really don't want to know and you can toggle them right here. The next submenu is the graphical settings. The game itself is not exactly the most demanding title ever, but there is one specific setting that I like to turn down, and that is the cloud detail. As you can see, if we have this option turned all the way up, it can be a little bit hard to see what is going on under these clouds. So, let's turn these down completely. This will make the clouds go away completely, and as you can see, we have a much clearer view of the game. In the control setting, there is only one option that we should pay attention to, and that is the rotate building sensitivity. I like to set this one to be as low as possible, so we can fine tune the direction of the buildings a little bit easier. By default, I believe it was set to around halfway, and the steps on the rotation can be a little bit too high. So I like to set this one as low as possible, and we also have this option to hold left control to make it even finer when we are rotating the buildings. Just to demonstrate, I have set that option all the way up to the maximum. So let's select a building, and if we scroll with the mouse wheel, you can see the steps on these rotations are quite high. So let's change it. Let's turn it all the way down to the minimum. Enable and now this rotation is a lot finer and more granular, and it, it makes it a lot easier to line up with the grid if that is something that you want to go for. Of course, you can go even finer and hold control to make it as granular as physically possible. And that is pretty much it for the settings. With that out of the way, let's dive into the actual game setup next. The first window that will open is the map selection screen. This is where you will find the default maps that come with the game, as well as the ones that you have downloaded from the workshop. Something to keep in mind is that some of these maps will actually come with people living on them already. Uh, you can see that some of them have this little icon on the bottom right. These little people will denote that these maps already have cities and villages already built, so that's something to keep in mind. Just for the sake of completeness, today we will go with a random map, because this will offer us extra options that we might want to take a look at before we dive into the actual game. The next window that opens after selecting the map is the difficulty setup. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of options and each of these options will basically determine the roadmap for this particular series. We will basically go through every single one of these options and we will dive first into the basics and then into the more advanced things that you need to know about these systems. 
Thankfully, having all these options makes the game extremely scalable in terms of difficulty. So, when you first start out, there is absolutely no shame in setting these to the easiest possible setting and just playing around with things. And as you learn and learn, you can enable these even inside the game. So, it is a very, very easy to learn game because you have all these options to enable and disable. One of the best thing about these difficulty settings is that you can change them inside the game. All you have to do is go to the game settings and you will find pretty much all of them in here except for two. The starting money and the starting year, well, for obvious reasons. So let's say that you are not comfortable with your current difficulty and you want to bump it up a little bit. Let's say you want to enable pollution. Click it, apply, and that is going to be pretty much it. From then, that point on, you will have to deal with the pollution generated by your industries. There are many, many systems in the game that can be a little bit more daunting for beginners. For example, water management, waste management, maintenance. If you don't know what to do with these, don't be afraid, just disable them and you can learn about them either in the campaign or by experimenting with them in your current game by enabling them and disabling them in the options. So let's go through all of them one by one. The money amount. This basically determines the starting amount of money. It doesn't determine the uh, economical difficulty, it is just the starting money. I believe Easy will give you 10 million rubles and 2 million dollars, and that amount will decrease as you go down on the hardness scale. The next one is the realistic mode. This is the most complicated option that we can go into, so I don't really want to start explaining this right now. I believe it will have to be explained once we have the dedicated episode for it. Right now, just know that you might want to keep this one disabled for now. The next option is the unsatisfied citizen reaction. This will determine just how unhappy the people will get if they cannot reach certain services or cannot get their hands on certain items from the shops, for example. The energy management option has two different settings, buildings only or buildings plus vehicles. Basically, buildings only means that you will have to supply electricity to the actual buildings and buildings plus vehicles means that apart from electricity, you will also have to supply fuel to your vehicles. The water management option I think is pretty self-explanatory. It just means that you will have to supply water to your people as well as to your different industrial buildings. For example, the food factory or the fabric factory will require water to be operational. The next option is the waste management. This one basically means that you will have to take care of the garbage generated by your people as well as your industries. But there is a third option, apart from disable and the waste option, which is demolition. Basically, it means that you will have to manually take apart the, the different buildings and roads and other infrastructure that you want to get rid of. It will basically mean that if you want to change something, you will really have to plan ahead. The next one is maintenance. By enabling this, basically means that vehicles and buildings will over time get more and more damaged, so you will have to set up an infrastructure that will take care of that damage. After that comes seasons. By default the game only has one season, summer. But enabling this will make it so that you will encounter autumn as well as winter. During these times the temperature will drop below freezing and you will have to supply the people with some heating which will also complicate things a little bit. I believe building fires is pretty self-explanatory. It just means that from time to time the different buildings will catch on fire, so you will have to build a fire station which will dispatch different fire fighting vehicles which will take care of it for you. The global events option means that from time to time you will get a notification that something is happening in the world. This can be a fluctuation in the prices on different items or it can be an epidemic that can impact the health of your citizens and things like that. And then comes pollution. Well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This means that your industrial buildings will emit pollution. And this will make your people sick, so 
you will either have to supply them with ample healthcare or, better yet, build these industrial buildings far away from your population centers. The education simulation has two options, simple and complex. Simple just means that you don't have to build schools or kindergartens, but you still have to build universities. The complex mode will mean that you will have to build schools and kindergartens as well, so children can get educated, as well as parents can go to work if they have babies at home. The crime and justice option means that you will have to supply each and every city with a police force, as well as a justice system, which will take care of the criminals that are being caught by the police. By setting the traffic simulation to complex, will mean that you will have to take advantage of the different road signs in the game. And I will leave it at that for now. By enabling research, the game will lock certain features and buildings behind these researches. You will have to do these in the university buildings, and different types of universities will be able to do different kinds of research. So, if you want to start simple, this you might want to enable. The day night cycle is a little bit more of an aesthetic option than the others, but it still has a little bit of a gameplay effect. This is where weather will be enabled, like rain, snowfall and things like that. Now, the vehicle availability. You can either have it set to all, that just means that every single vehicle type will be available right from the start. Then the other two options are either lock start according to year or lock according to year. Lock start according to year just means that once a vehicle becomes available, it will never go away. But the last option means that after that vehicle goes out of production in other countries, it will become unavailable to be purchased. You will still be able to buy the plants for those vehicles and make them yourself, but you will not be able to buy them from other countries. And last but not least, year of start. The biggest impact of this option will be on the vehicle availability, because this determines basically what kind of vehicles you will have available to you at the start. The very last option we have is the population number on the very very top. This just basically means that if your map can have people living on it already, this will determine just how many people will live on the map. The last window that we will encounter before we can get into the green proper is this one, the random map settings. Here we can fine tune the different sliders that will determine what kind of terrain that we will be playing on. By setting the amount of lake option to the bare minimum, it will mean that you will have zero lakes on the map. But if you really want to go crazy and set it to the maximum amount, as you can see, the map will be completely filled with water with little islands to play on. Then, if you set the amount of hills option to the bare minimum, that will mean that that map will be pretty much completely flat. On the other extremes, you can generate terrains like this by setting that option all the way to the maximum. The next option is of course the terrain height. This will basically just determine the elevation of these hills, and they can be pretty low. Or, if you set that slider to the maximum, then you can create big high mountains. The next option is tree density. As the name suggests, it will determine just how dense the different forests will be on the map. And of course the forest amount option will determine just how much of the map will be covered by forests. So basically the tree density will determine how dense these forests are and the forest amount will determine just how much of the uh, map will be covered by these forests. The last slider that we can change is the amount of rivers we can have on the map. It can range from the maximum of 5 all the way down to 0. Just keep in mind, if you don't have any rivers on the map, you might end up being locked out one of the transportation options in the form of shipping. By playing around with these settings, you can create quite nice looking landscapes. And if you are not satisfied with something, you can just go back to the main menu and start all over again. And I think this is pretty much where we will leave this episode. Before we go, I would like to do a little bit of housekeeping. Because of the highly structured nature of this series, I don't really want to commit myself to any kind of a schedule. 
I will of course still try to make this one as regular as possible, but I really don't want to make any promises. Basically, once a video is done, it will be uploaded and it will come out alongside the regularly scheduled videos. So if you are a fan of the current series, don't worry, they are not going anywhere. As for the next episode, it will be about how to get started in the actual game. It will very likely include a basic and a more advanced kind of approach, for example, one with and one without realistic mode enabled. So anyways, I believe all that is left to say is that thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can leave a like, leave a comment and maybe subscribe to the channel if you want. If you would like to support me further, you can do so by clicking the join button and becoming a channel member. Once again, thank you for watching and thank you very much for your support. I will see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.